Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me. In today's video, I want to talk to you about something that, at least for me, was kind of a really big eye-opener, and that was how to look at my pentatonic scale from a fifth string root. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. It's, it's not immediately obvious. You know, typically, when we talk about the pentatonic scale or, or the blues scale, and by the way, those, those are interchangeable, right? We have, uh, like, let's say we're in A minor, right? We have box one is the name of that pattern, and that's the A minor pentatonic scale. If I add the blue note, it's, it's still box one. Uh, the pentatonic minor and the, and the minor blues scale are, are functionally equivalent. They're interchangeable. And we have another box. And, and I have a video that goes through all of the different boxes, so I'm not going to get too carried away with it. But we can take all those same notes. Same. Those are the same five notes. And we have five of them. Now, I say sixth string root because those are all, all five of those patterns are the A minor blue scale or A minor pentatonic scale, A, C, D, E, G, or A, C, D, E flat, D sharp, whatever you want to call it, E, G. Okay, and it doesn't matter which of those five boxes I'm playing, I'm playing the same five notes. But what happens if, let's say that I'm playing like a minor blues and the next chord that comes up is a D minor and I would like to play the D minor pentatonic scale, but I don't want to have to just go from here right? I don't want to go from there to just go up here. That's a really common thing that I hear from, I'll say, new soloists. All of the solos tend to start from here. <laughs> that's how we tend to learn the box. And so, among other things, one thing I always suggest is practice from the top root, the first string root. Practice going down as well as you practice going up. But let's say that then it comes time to go to the D, the D minor for the D minor chord in a minor blues, and I don't want to just jump up. I'd like to keep it generally in that same area. There is a D right here on the fifth string, right? Right next to the A. It seems, it seems a shame to make this big leap across the fretboard when everything I need is right here. And it's this efficiency, if you start to look for this kind of efficiency, it really helps a lot in your soloing. Okay, so if, if I want to switch over to, I'll say, the D minor, I need to know which pattern goes here. And I can kind of guess at it in the sense that from A minor, right, from box one, I have first finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger, first finger, third finger, first finger, third finger, first, you know, I have those same minor third, whole step, whole step, minor third, right? So if I were to start here and do that same sort of pattern, minor third, whole step, whole step, whole step, got to add one because of the B string, and then minor third then I could find it, but it might help to know that that's box four. So for me, when I first kind of figured out that, oh, if I want to, I can just use box four on a fifth string root, and I'm right there. I don't have to travel across the fretboard, which, you know, obviously you can make mistakes. You know, I try to eliminate the possibility of making mistakes. If I'm traveling and crossing, uh, jumping through a bunch of different frets, the likelihood of me making a mistake is much higher, <laughs> and I don't want that. Or let's say that I'm playing a blues in D, right? Or maybe it's even a, like a, a regular, I'll say shuffle blues, and I've got D7, G7, and A7. that I want to kind of stick close by. I don't want a solo up here. 
I might want to later in the solo, right? That's, that's part of the thing is I, I often talk about the story form of soloing. As your solos build, let's say you're going to play over two choruses. Well, you kind of want to get higher and faster and louder that whole time. Well, if I start my solo way up here, I haven't left myself far to go. <laughs> right? Where am I going to go from here? I'm going to be playing on the high squeaky frets a lot. And you can do that, but it just gets to be a little bit of a challenge. Instead, if I know that I can be down here, It's all right there. When the second chorus comes around, maybe I move it up. When the third chorus comes around, maybe I move it up even further. But I've left myself someplace to go. That's really important. Okay, so again, for me, it was just simply sort of that eye opening experience that, hey, with a fifth string root, if I want that minor pentatonic minor blues sound, I just got to use box four. It's a box that I already play. It's just I don't look at it that way, right? If I'm if I'm playing an A and I get to box four, you just have to sort of start reminding yourself that oh hey, that's another root note. That's handy, right? I I can use that. <laughs> so as you're maybe soloing in A. And maybe you go through some boxes. When you get here, make a note of that. Right? Anytime you come across those root notes, you want to you want to pay attention to to where that pattern is and where it's being used. So, this is just a, you know, I know this is just a little bit of a tip today, but like I said, when I was growing up and I and I just sort of saw that and and it really made sense to me, it just really opened a lot of doors. And so I'm kind of hoping that it will do the same thing for you. So play around with it as always. Um, I'll leave a link. Like I said, I have a video where I did all of the five boxes all laid out, uh, you know, with, with graphics and everything. It's a, it's a nice video that will take you through all five of the shapes in case you don't already know them. I also, uh, I have a PDF of, of all five of the shapes. I'll try and leave all that information in a link near this video for you in case you need it. Uh, and as always, I'll leave links to my website, bluesguitarunleashed.com. Uh, I have some, some, an email list that you may want to sign up for. I have a few uh, nice things there. I do a lot more via email than I do via YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever. So if you're watching me there, I encourage you to get on the email list. And I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.